Hi everyone, my name is Peter Faria and welcome back to another Day in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below, click on the bell to turn on the notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we're going to be talking about how to reverse the radio button logic. So what I have right now on my screen, as you can see, is a three option radio button setup. So what is happening? Well, I have a text input with option A, option B and option C, as well as I attached three radio buttons in order for me to be able to select one of those options. So right now everything is turned on, right? But the key thing over here is to understand that I'm not connecting the radio button to the actual tube. What I have the, the radio button connected to is the container. So my goal is to either enable or disable containers based on the user's input. So this over here would be an analytic app. Right now, using the default setup for the radio button, the action tool will either enable or disable containers from a question. If I run this as an app, you can see the hit what we A, B, or C. As I select A and hit finish, my output shows me B and C. If I go for select B, then you can see A and C. What about select C? Of course, then A and B. So what is happening? Well, the radio button kind of works backwards than what you may think that this will actually work as. So the way that we need to fix this is actually by not using the default action type in the action tool. The way that we need to do this is actually by flipping the logic that applies. Right now, as you hit the radio button option to select A, what is actually happening is turning off the container. So a quick way to just fix this, so you can do provide the user a multi-option to select different options over here is to use the update value with formula. And then what we're going to be doing is updating this string over here. How do we do this? Well, let's update this using the formula. Let's click on over here. And the key thing to understand is that the number one over here that shows up that I'm highlighting is the user's answer. So what can we do? Well, all I'm going to do is flip it. So it's actually kind of funny. So it's going to be what? If number one equals to true, then let's make it false. Else, let's make it true. And if. So I'm literally flipping the logic, right? I'm reversing it. So what I'm going to do is apply the same logic for all three actions over here. So I can just copy this, click OK. I'll now go to the other action, change the formula, and I can just paste at the bottom over here. And then same thing for the last one. There you go. As I do that, I can save my new app. I'm going to run this as an app again. And let's see how that works. So select A, I hit finish, and now I only get A. Select B, hit finish, and now I only get B. Select C, hit finish, and now I only get C. There are other ways to work with this. In this case, this also works, right? So now you know how you can actually reverse the radio button logic. So this was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment them below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.